Okay, hi again everyone. Um, by this stage, you've completed three lessons that have involved a lot of reading and writing. And I think after that, we've all earned a little bit of a break. So hopefully this lesson will be a little bit more fun. We're going to have a cocktail party and I'll explain to you in this video what that's going to mean. As you're watching, please make sure that you get a good copy of the notes that you read on this um, presentation so that you've got a record in your books of what it is that we've done. So beginning uh, with our aim, uh, we would like to model how quickly a highly infectious disease can spread through a population. And then when we're done, we will also model how health authorities can work backward and track where the disease might have come from. Our materials are quite simple. Uh, as a whole class, we will have 20 test tubes. That's one per student. 19 of those will contain tap water and one will contain sodium hydroxide. There will also be a dropper bottle of phenolphthalene in the room uh, and that will be for me to use. I'll explain that to you in a moment. Uh, before we begin, though, we need to talk about the hazards associated with this activity. Sodium hydroxide is a very strong base. Uh, it's the one that's used in oven cleaner. I don't know if you've ever cleaned an oven, but it's a really unpleasant job. It's really hard on the eyes. Sodium hydroxide is extremely dangerous to eyes. And for that reason, we must wear safety glasses at all times during this activity. Do not attempt to clean up any broken glass if you drop a test tube. Uh, just stop what you're doing and I'll come around and sweep it up for you. Pink test tubes, and you'll know what that means in a moment, may not be poured down the sink when you're finished with them. Our method is quite simple. Each member of the class is going to select a test tube and that test tube will be clear and colorless. It will look like water. Now I'd like to show you what I mean by uh, what I mean in this activity but I don't have test tubes here at home so what I've done is just get uh, a drinking glass from the kitchen and I filled it up in this case just with tap water. As you move around the room everyone is going to have a test tube that looks like this clear and colorless. Uh, as you meet students, you're going to swap the contents of your test tubes. So here's my other test tube, which is also clear and colorless. What we're going to do when we meet is pour one into the other and then pour back again. Now we're sure that we've got a good thorough mix of the contents of this test tube. Finally, we'll divide it roughly evenly back between the two of us. And now we're done. We have swapped the contents of our test tube and we will each go away and find two other students and do the same. Please do not swap with more than three students, otherwise our results will get very complicated very, very quickly. Now when all of that mingling is done, I'll come around the room and add two drops of phenolphthalein to each test tube. If your test tube turns pink, I want you to write your name on the whiteboard. That will indicate that you are infected with our disease. Our cleanup. Uh, remember, please do not tip the pink test tubes in the sink. Instead, tip them into the brown bottle on the back bench. The colorless test tubes are fine to go down the sink. All test tubes should be placed in the dirty glassware bucket. Then come back to your seats and we'll see if we can work together as a class to figure out who had the initial diseased test tube. All right, thank you very much. We'll see you in class tomorrow.